Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm going to try to make this intro quick because this one, it's a long one. A video tutorial on how to color my floral images has been my most requested video to date. And here's the thing, I, I have no secrets. I've learned from many talented artists here on YouTube um, by practicing and just doing my own research. I will say though, I credit a lot of my style of coloring to Marika Ratu. If it wasn't for her lovely tutorials many years back, I don't think I would have found a niche in the card making community, especially within the Altenew brand. Today I'm demoing the Altenew July 2019 stamp die stencil release, and I thought using the Altenew pen sketch flowers would be the perfect stamp set to create a tutorial on floral coloring. I have all the materials I used in this project linked below in affiliate links, and as always I greatly appreciate your support for my channel. Now, to save some of your time, I already stamped directly on an A2 panel for my main card front, as well as a smaller panel in an alcohol-friendly dye ink. Now, I just recently got the Tim Holtz Tonic Studios Glass Media Mat. I used to craft on a self-healing cutting mat by Fiskars, but it started to show its age. So, I'm glad I made the investment to get this mat because I, I love it so far. But because of the nature of glass, it's a slick surface to work on, but that's okay because Altenew has also released this wonderful stamping mat. It's made out of silicone, and as you know, the wonderful properties of silicone is it makes this heat resistant, ink resistant, and a great surface to stamp on. But today, I'm using it as a surface to keep my paper from sliding around so much. As you can see, it is marked for 11 by 15 inches with a total workable surface of 12 by 16 marked at every half inch. This is about 28 by 38 centimeters metric. One side has this screen printed grid, while the other side is blank and it sticks right to my glass mat. I just have to remind myself to take off the mat before I start cutting. Okay, so I'll be using Altenew Artist Markers today. Believe it or not, the Altenew Artist Markers were the first alcohol-based markers I ever owned. I was really intimidated by other systems at first before investing in these indispensable tools. Everything that you love about the Altenew dye inks is mirrored in these markers. They are in easy layerable sets, they coordinate with other ink mediums within the Altenew brand, and of course they are just of superior quality. To begin coloring these flowers, I'm going to grab three markers within the red family. You will need a dark shade, a mid-hue, and a light tint. From darkest to lightest, I'm using ruby red, crimson, and frosty pink. Now, I realized I made a little mistake after filming this video. I didn't mix up a marker from set A with set C, but it's okay, the tutorial remains the same. I will supplement the trio with a colored pencil. I don't use anything fancy, this is just a student grade pencil and a shade that matches my darkest shade of marker. I use this more for no outline coloring to add shadow details. And I actually didn't really need this today, but I'll show you anyway that I use a colored pencil for some of my other projects. I brought you all just a little closer to my stamp panel. I will have the marker I'm using in the top left corner of your screen, so that's what the washi tape is for. It's just a reminder for myself. I'll start with the outermost portion of the petal and look for where there is a V. Now, I use a lot of a technique called chiaroscuro to color floral arrangements. Basically, it's a strong contrast between light and dark to give a two-dimensional surface a three-dimensional effect. So going off that principle, where there is light, there has to be dark. And where there is dark, there has to be light. So again, starting from the outermost portion of the petal, I've marked my dark spot within the V of the petal where I'm assuming there is depth to this particular image. Then, using chiaroscuro, I will add shade to the center of the petal, framing the V I just colored. After that, I just use the mid-hue and then the light hue to slowly diffuse the darkest shade I laid down in the first place. I use a lot of this flicking motion to color petals. I think it mimics the striations you naturally see in flower petals. You'll see I don't fully diffuse the darkest color. The beauty of chiaroscuro is that it creates these stark contrasts, giving the petals movement as, as if it's fabric in the wind. 
And I've actually said that in a previous video using Altenew Perfectly Perfect. It was my first video here on YouTube. As I'm coloring this flower, I'm keeping in mind that the mobile phase in alcohol markers is, is alcohol. Just as in watercolor, if you overwork the paper with water and try to manipulate the pigment too much, you end up with grainy pigments or damage to the sizing of the paper. This is the same with any alcohol-based marker. Try not to overwork your blends. Also, I know people have success with coloring an entire area with one color and then moving up the lightest color and so on. Usually, I like to work with one petal at a time. Because of the volatile nature of alcohol, I find it I need to work fairly quickly to help diffuse my previous layers. And this prevents me from overworking the pigment. But it just depends on the detail I want to add or the size of the flower. Now, if I need areas of detailed shading, this is where I bring in the color pencil. I do the same flicking motion to shade, and as Kathy Rack says, make sure that the colored pencil point is very sharp to get into nooks and crannies. Seriously, you'll end up with disappointment if you don't start with a sharp point. Another thing I like about Altenew Artist Marker Set A, and, and also Set B, is that you have a set of complementary colors. Red and green are opposite the color wheel. And while the depth may not be as obvious, using color complement for shading is another wonderful technique to adding shadow to your flower petals. In this case, I'm using Forest Glades, the second lightest green tint, to add my shadows first. Then I will basically do everything else the same as the first arrangement, moving from darkest to lightest marker, and hopefully you'll see the slight difference this makes. There's just a different quality of contrast to this smaller flower. I'm going to speed this up now and show you other options of coloring. Don't be afraid to mix up your shades. In this case, I'm using the fourth darkest, the second lightest, and then the lightest markers for greater contrast in this flower. And then of course, I'm going to do the exact same thing with the B set of markers with the purple family. That completes my smaller panel. I'll set this aside for now and work on the larger panel. I'm going to turn on some music and speed this part up. Hopefully this repetition will get you to see how I work in these larger petals. Again, I'm using a mix of Altenew Artist Markers in set A and B to color this arrangement. I'll talk to you in a few.
So here are my finished panels. I won't use all of the flowers in the smaller panel because I wanted to break up the symmetry with an odd number of flowers. Now, I gotta remember to take my silicone mat off because if I cut it, I'll, I'll cry. <laughs> I'll add some white splatters to all of the flowers for a fun dewy texture and then use my swivel knife to cut out the smaller panel of flowers. Before I pick a sentiment to add to this card, I'll add black splatters to break up the symmetry of the main panel a bit more. I do this by diluting a bit of the jet black ink spray from Altenew with some water. Then I grabbed one of the fine frames from the geometric frames die set and cut a piece of white cardstock. I kept both the frame and the negative center portion. With the negative cut, I trimmed it slightly smaller than the frame so that there is a margin around the negative space. I used this stamp and sentiment from the crystal frame stamp and die set from the same release from Altenew. I foam mounted my sentiment panel right onto the center of my flower arrangement, and I had to use a T-ruler to make sure my sentiment was on there straight. That finishes this alcohol marker floral arrangement card. Before I let you go, I want to thank you for your interest in this video and in my channel. I get ideas from what to share with you all from the comments you leave over on my IG, blog and my channel so thank you for being so interactive it makes coming up with content so easy thank you to team altenew for the opportunity to design for them yet again it's always such a privilege to create make sure you subscribe to my channel if you like what you've seen from me and hit the bell icon so you never miss a future video thank you so much for stopping by talk to you all very soon and have the best day